Thank you very much. And now we have time for some discussion. We're also going to set up two more chairs so that all of the speakers can sit up in the front. So that will take just one second. And please, all, all those who spoke, come up to the front. In the meantime, turn your gears in your head and remember the questions that you've been suppressing this whole time. Uh, yeah, in the back. I, uh, uh, I have a question about uh, historical uh, 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 comparison, uh, uh, um, maybe to uh, first uh, uh, contribution. Uh, uh, can we um, uh, compare uh, historical events in uh, French history, uh, Commune de Paris in 18... Uh, uh, 1779 uh, causality with uh, events of uh, May 1968 uh, 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 because uh, 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 Metropolitan Paris uh, uh, has been emphasized uh, in growing uh, uh, work, uh, working, 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 working class uh, uh, suburb, Banu, uh, Banu uh, and and, uh, and later um, uh, emphasized with uh, growing anarchist, anarchist, anarchist movement. Uh, uh, in so this uh, question was directed toward Patrice Manillier in particular, yeah. yeah. So the question is whether we can compare May 68 in Paris? Ah, with the commune. Ah, uh, you mean the, uh, I see. Mm. Mm. But I, I think all the revolutions and even the social movements in the world, not only in the Western world, not only in France, have this multiplicity of components, all of them, right? It's, uh, but you, uh, so the, um, the competition or the alternatives between the more anarchist oriented sides and uh, the more uh, Marxist uh, sides uh, has been present throughout the entire uh, 19th and 20th century. Uh, but you write that uh, the Commune in 1870 and uh, May 68 were probably those two moments where, in France at least, uh, those two elements were kind of even uh, somehow. And um, so, but there is one difference for my interest, there's one difference, which is that the commune uh, precisely was a government. It was a, it was a real revolution, <laughs> for a certain extent. It was, it's a failed revolution, uh, whereas May 68 is not even a failed revolution. It's another form of event, and maybe another form of revolution. So uh, that is a difference, and therefore the memory of that event is different. So the melancholy after the commune is central to uh, the perception of the commune, and that melancholy has the shape, not at all, of the Badiou's sort of event, not at all. It has the shape of the return of the victims, the return of the repressed. It will come back, and of course Marx here is, uh, is central to this interpretation of uh, the commune. So the commune is inscribed in the history of revolutions, which are lived as repetitions of the same problem. Whereas May 68, as I said, is a, is a different problem because it doesn't, uh, it doesn't announce a future. I mean, there was a very famous slogan, continuons le début, let's continue the beginning. Uh, 
And the fact is that the beginning somehow, uh, it's only the beginning that has continued. <laughs> There's only been a beginning, uh, in a way. So that's why there were those speculations about this. So I, I agree that the concept of the event uh, is linked to that, is linked to the fact that there was no um, inscription in history. Uh, so I don't know if that answers to uh, what you, were, uh, you have in mind. But. Um, I think uh, I'll ask for another question, and if, if you want to, whoever responds to that, if you still have more to say, you can answer both questions at the same time, but so that we can move on and collect more questions and make sure everyone who wanted to speak has the chance. Let me also say that I think we can have questions in Czech and we'll manage to translate into English if anyone prefers to ask in Czech. Uh, hello, if there's nobody who wants to ask, I can ask, but it's, uh, it's a question to Professor Nesbitt. Uh, you, uh, you have, in one moment you have said like that, Italian theory, uh, Max Tomba, Riccardo Belfiore, uh, and, okay, and uh, that uh, it is very interesting to uh, follow those uh, analyses in the context of the coming full automatization uh, of the library. Yeah? As far as I know, both Belofiore and Tomba all struggle against that idea of full automatization as Eurocentric. That is, how can we speak about uh, that uh, threat of full, Euro, uh, uh, full uh, uh, automatization while we have in one factory of Apple in China, 500,000 physical workers. So uh, could you elaborate this point? Um, <laughs> thanks, I think um, if I understood correctly, it's a really important point that you're making and I just sort of threw that out at the end of my talk, the, pro the contemporary problem of, of capitalism and, and general automation. Uh, uh, and I think it, Precisely the problem that you're pointing to uh, uh, invokes the necessity of the kind of general categorical conceptualization of capitalism as a global process that uh, uh, Marx first uh, uh, initiated. And precisely because if we think about the ways that suddenly automation is becoming a general problem, that is to say a huge, huge increased number of production processes that 10, 15 years ago only humans could do and suddenly now machines can do them. We might think of that at a sort of empirical, evidential, experiential level as something that happens in Silicon Valley or at MIT or, I, or in, the, in the, the rich global north, something like that. But it's precisely, I think, uh, uh, if uh, uh, a larger conception of the, the overall dynamics of this process that tell us uh, uh, that in fact the, the effects of this kind of process are not only felt but much more devastatingly felt in the global south. That is to say that insofar as commodities are global, say cotton today, Cotton. Cotton is picked by machines in Texas. Cotton is picked by hand by millions of laborers in Africa, in Indonesia, in various places in the global south. And that commodity exists and is, and, and, and is monetarized, valorized as a commodity on a global market. And so that the, the impact of transformations in capitalism that seem at the, at the experiential level to be going on only in the rich global north, in fact are constantly and even much more powerfully devalorizing the value of labor power in the global south, putting uh, precisely making redundant and, 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 and rendering superfluous living labor power uh, in, in sites such as insights across the global south. So, so anyway, I won't go into 
belaboring the point, but, but it's an important point, which is precisely if we only look at the, 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 the experiential, evidential, empirical surface data, we might think that this kind of a contemporary phenomenon is just going on in the rich global north. But in fact, it's this sort of a conceptual and, and more general uh, 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 orientation of thinking that, that can develop an adequate conceptual apparatus for understanding these processes that actually shows us the ways in which contemporary, let's say capitalist imperialism, as this sort of what I'm calling a post-human phenomenon, rendering living labor power infinitesimal and superfluous in its capacity to produce surplus value. These effects are actually going on much more strongly in the global south where there aren't machines and processes of automation, yet nonetheless sites that are part of a global totality. So anyway, that's, that's maybe a different discussion, but, but what, I, what I'm trying to draw that into a linkage with is this process of formal reflection and, and formalization that I think begins in this period uh, that we could call structuralism <coughs> globally, but I'm, I'm saying as a conceptual formalization and specifically reflection on capitalism in, in these years leading up to 68. Um, so that's why th I'm saying it's still relevant into the present. So thanks for the question. There's uh, another question here. Uh, okay, uh, I would like to ask uh, I guess Vincent Jack and uh, Jana Berankova, because uh, I was just thinking about uh, how to put some uh, concepts of the last uh, and into contact with some concepts of uh, Badiou. And uh, at the end of this Deleuzean lecture, you said that uh, instead of uh, laws, we need institutions. And it came to me like uh, if the institution can be something like an event aside in uh, uh, Badiou's uh, philosophy, like a kind of place where something may emerge in a, let's say, smaller scale than a revolution, but where some new kind of, uh, let's say, meetings or contacts or way, way of life, let's say, can be produced. C can you say something to, to this? If and I think after these answers, we should probably take our lunch break. So these will also be your fine. Uh, you, okay, the, well, then Michal will have a final word. But <laughs> first, first yeah, you. I think we had really basically two very different concepts of the event as such. I would say like more in general, like whether in the last I, I tend to more associate the event with actually the becoming, like what's, you know, happening in time, whereas in Badiou the event is this kind of, you know, really like a rapture that sort of reorganizes the structure of knowledge, etc. And to, to respond to your question, I would say, well, I think if, in a sense, like, there can be no event in, in, in I, I would say there's no events in institutions, right? Because the institution, when you are an institution, like a political party or whatever, you actually, all the elements of that institution are, are counted as one by, the, by that structure, right? So in a sense, for him, the, the places of like really the eventual sites are the sites are the sites of, as I try to say, of like what is actually excluded from the state power, what is excluded from, from this kind of uh, count, uh, count as one by the institution. So, so actually, no, I think the, the, in a sense what happens in the event is that somehow to say it very like, bluntly and simply is that you have what is beyond that institution and it sim somehow makes eruption into it and, and reorganizes it. That's why I would say actually the key to understand really by you in, when reading those very difficult concepts, that what we need to keep in mind all the time is the dialectics, is how how does he preserve, you know, the a dialectical thinking within his system? Whereas, I mean, Deleuze, he was more like into, I would say, you know, trying to create different forms of like dialectics. I mean, Vincent could tell you probably much more than I, but I think it's for me like, uh, you know, for someone working on Badiou, like he would he would actually 
see Deleuze as rather, you know, anti-dialectical because if we take, if you take the figure of like the fold, you know, what's inside is also outside. So this is this constant reversal. So it's kind of a, maybe a different dialectics, but definitely not the not the same one. Um, so yeah, I hope I and maybe Vincent, if you want to add something. Uh, no. Uh, the the dialectical process was not a Deleuze thing, but I, th I think it's not, his critics, is, uh, which is uh, very interesting, is it's, it's this uh, philosophical work with Guadalupe. And it's why I, I thought of Saint Just, while it was the big event of the French Revolution. And some say we need uh, much more laws, and Saint Just said we need much more institutions. And it came to me that maybe the uh, creation, the political creation of Deleuze and Guattari is this uh, institutional, uh, institutional creation. The problem is that the, the, cre the real creation was by uh, Guattari. And uh, Guattari texts are awful to read. It's not clear, it's obscure. And uh, to be a real... Politic was not the big thing of the laws, so uh, it's you have to recons reconstruct maybe the uh, real uh, uh, theoretical invention of uh, Deleuze and Guattari. Can I can I add something about mm -hmm. those? Uh, so yeah, I think. Uh, Okay, this one doesn't work. Okay, uh, I think the uh, the comparison between the concept of the event in Badiou, the concept of the event in Deleuze, first must be put in a larger context, which is what I try to do with structuralism. But the problem with the concept of the event in Badiou and Rancière, what I call the leftist uh, orientation, is that indeed the event is a radical exception over the situation. Whereas in the Structuralist, post-structuralist, and Deleuze for me is part of that. Uh, we need to say something about being in order to understand why what there is makes it open, not possible, but open to the advent of an event. So, for instance, in, in, in Rancière, there is no police that is more compatible with politics than any other police. That, I think, is a problem. It's, a, it's really a problem. So the, it's the same with the notion of radical contingency. Contingency is not radical. So we can have contingency, but contingency is a way of relativizing in a precise way. What is it? So but Deleuze's concept of the event is not, uh, it's not temporal in the sense of a succession. But there I want to say, so that's one of the problems, because with the leftist concept also you have a problem with how is it materialist? It is materialist, but how is it? So it's a contest between different forms of materialism. And then you also have a, a, a difficulty, which is what I noticed when you're in your wonderful talk. I, uh, for instance, in, in one, at one point you quoted Deleuze who said, nothing will happen as before. If we want to define the event in a non-historical way, that is, not in the sense of the difference between a past situation and a future situation, that is not the measure of the event, right? So. Uh, in the same way you said, uh, the, uh, the, you cannot reduce the event to what happens. And I think it's, yeah, we can reduce the event to what happens, but we cannot redu reduce it to what is realized, which is a different aspect. So Deleuze's concept of the event is, a, is the eruption in one locality of the possibility of the variation of the very structure of possibility. And it's determinate, it's not absolute. Whereas in Badiou, Rancer, and the others, uh, precisely it's the idea that there is a radical exception. So exception on the one hand, openness on the other hand. Those I think are the two uh, concepts. I Sorry, may I say that this is not to say that any of those is the truth about 68. What is 68 is actually the space of uh, discussion and problematization of these various positions. Yeah, if I can just add something to maybe clarify that, I think actually for, like by you, well, I'm not sure actually if this is really materialist. It's, he says it's not the materialism, but it's materialist dialectics, which actually he says something very, uh, actually more or less the same, like Mao Zedong in his, in his text on the contradiction, which also talks about the, contra, you know, materialist dialectics, actually more than, uh, you know, uh, materialism as such. And I would say that, for Badiou, it's precisely the event as an exception, as what is in beyond the structure. I think I would say it's motivated basically by the question, okay, uh, 
how can something really new happen in the situation, right? How can it happen that really something changes and that there's something totally new and uh, there's not always, you know, the repetition actually uh, of the same. So I think his polemics with structuralism on that topic is very much like motivated by this question of what is newness, you know, how do we, how do we define radical change? And yes, you, I think you are right, it's basically very leftist uh, uh, conviction. Yeah, Ultra left. It's in some sense, it's, it's really, I would say, he's really much the structure doesn't go to the streets, you know? He's, it's very much like uh, um, inscribed in this leftist heritage. That's why even though it may seem as very abstract ontological concepts, it's actually uh, ontology matters even for the, the, you know, the contemporary left-wing politics somehow. And just to say a word about uh, the, the concept of events in Deleuze's work, Deleuze was not really interesting in the big events. It, for, for him, it was a micro événement, a little change in our lives. So maybe with the thinking of events for uh, May 68, it's quite kind of awkward. But I do the, the job today. But <laughs> I think that is the, 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 the concept is for the everyday life or not for big politics not issues. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and we you can read the book by Badiou on Deleuze, Deleuze, La Clameur de l'Etre, where he... Uh, Let's have our one, one final uh, point and a, a very possibly very brief uh, response. It's a question uh, addressed to uh, Nick. Uh, uh, in the closing part of your presentation, you spoke about uh, the things like uh, uh, capitalism, uh, structure of stru structures, uh, labor power, and so on. And my question is, <coughs> do you think that uh, uh, Marx's analysis can be reinterpreted as uh, axiomatic formalism via Badiou? Yes. <laughs> so, I doubt, so, I doubt okay, two about sentences. it. Uh, two sentence version is, Badiou is not interested in the logic of capitalism, but I think nonetheless that the, 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 uh, uh, the logic that he presents in precisely in a book like, uh, like Logics of Worlds that is uh, uh, an attempt at a formalization uh, of the logics uh, uh, of, a of a given situation and how precisely they produce uh, certain points at which events can occur. I think that that, that apparatus, that uh, 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 thought can precisely be reoriented uh, uh, to a different world than the various worlds he's interested in considering precisely toward capitalism. And so I think that, that uh, very much so, uh, that apparatus of thought, that ontology, uh, uh, could be a very powerful way of developing a formalism out of the categories that Marx first elaborated in Capital. I think that we are living in capitalism. Somebody said to me the other day, but you're just presupposing that. Well, axiomatically, I think we are in capitalism, but I think that we need conceptual resources to think its transformations, but nonetheless, those basic operative categories that Marx put forward, relative surplus values, labor power, uh, et cetera, et cetera, that those can be reworked, reconceptualized, developed, formalized into a novel articulation that is adequate, that could be adequate to thinking the present. Thank you very much to all the speakers. Uh, also, once again, a round of applause for the speakers. Oh.